Ortiz keep his perfect KO streak going. He's only 22 years old. His birthday's in five days. He's five foot ten with a 72 inch reach. Maurice Hooker will have a four and a half inch reach. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from Dickies Arena here at the Lone Star State, Fort Worth, Texas. Live on to on tonight. This is our main event of the evening. 12 rounds for the vacant WBO International Welterweight Championship. And now, fight fans, here we go. Two diamonds, one ring. Tonight, who will shine the brightest? The Masi Caballeros. It's golden time! <laughs> Introducing to you, fighting out of the blue corner, with trainers Brian McIntyre and Isal Diegas. Wearing black with gold, he officially weighed in at 147 pounds. In 31 professional bouts, his record is impressive. 27 victories, 18 wins coming by way of knockout, only one blemish in three draws. Introducing to you the former two-time defending super lightweight champion of the world, hailing from Dallas, Texas, USA. Here is Maurice Mighty Mo. And across the ring tonight stands his opponent with trainers Father Virgil Ortiz Sr. and Robert Garcia. Don Blue with block, he too weighed in at 147 pounds. Tonight, this rising welterweight enters the contest perfect. 16 bouts, 16 victories, 16 huge wins coming by way of knockout, no defeats. Introducing to you the current WBA Gold Walter Wade Champion, the fighting pride of Grand Prairie, Texas, and representing Dallas, here is the undefeated, the phenomenal Virgil Ortiz Junior. <laughs> Virgil. All right, gentlemen, it's an honor to work with y'all again, so I want you to obey my commands, protect yourself at all times, touch them up, and best of luck to both of y'all. You know, Maurice Hooker went on the road to win his title against Terry Flanagan. He went on the road to defend it against Alex Saucedo. He's in his hometown tonight, but this sure feels like a road game for Maurice Hooker. Hooker promises to test him like no one has before. But will that be enough to fight stop back. this Maurice, knockout right freight there. train from Grand Prairie, Perfect. Texas, in front of a very raucous hometown crowd? Here we go, 12 rounds in the welterweight division. Ortiz Jr. in the black and blue, Maurice Hooker in the black and gold. You can already see Hooker's long jab. I mean, that's a long reach right there by the former champion. You wonder how Hooker's going to handle the first power punch that lands, and I think one just stung him a right hand. He backed up a little bit. And already, Ortiz trying to get Hooker out of his comfort zone. I remember Hooker was knocked out by Jose Ramirez, the junior welterweight power. This is the first time he's feeling a real welterweight power. And Hooker already exchanging with Ortiz Jr. He should stay behind that jab, but that's easier said than done when it comes to a freight train like Ortiz. And Sergio, you've told me before, once a fighter gets cold cocked like Hooker did when he faced Jose Ramirez, they're never the same. They're never the same, and if they are a hint of what they were, they're still shell-shocked once they get hit with that first big punch. Hooker has plenty of power, too. Don't count him out. 27 wins, 18 KOs. Right hand again for Ortiz Jr. Now, Hooker 
that could definitely hurt you. He has power, especially behind that, that rangy, lanky right hand. If he catches you at the end of it, it could be trouble for Ortiz Jr. Remember, Ortiz Jr. has never been past the seventh round. This is the fourth fight that's been scheduled for 12. Yeah, and that is definitely part of the game plan of Maurice Hooker, to survive some of these early rounds, get Ortiz into deeper water, and see if he can take advantage of the territory you're more familiar with. They're exchanging hooks, and you would think Hooker would not want to do that. You don't exchange hooks with a hooker, especially a bigger hooker like Virgil Ortiz Jr. Straight right hand again, down the pipe for Ortiz Jr. The straight one, two, that's gonna be the money punches for, for Hooker. Just like that, get your combinations and then get on that angle. Do not, do not stand in front of Ortiz. After you throw your, your combinations, get a slight angle to the right or to the left. Which fighter would benefit more going to the body? Both of them are excellent body punchers. You would think Ortiz Jr. is a better body puncher because he's shorter and explosive, but Hooker, he throws mean down there, just like we're seeing right now. You saw Hooker dig left hand to the liver, but Ortiz handled it well. That is the end of a pretty entertaining round one. They've each felt each other's power. Let's see how they settle in here in round number two. I think for Hooker, as important as it is to keep pumping that jab out there, he has got to get Ortiz's respect with one of his right hands. Ortiz has never been hurt in any of his fights. Hooker has to be the first to do it to have a chance. quick when you throw the body shots because Ortiz Jr. ready to fire. This is high octane power by both fighters right now. It's just beautiful to watch. The counter punching, the power from Ortiz Jr., the counter punching from Hooker. It's going to be a great fight. It's going to be a great fight if Hooker can continue to absorb those right hands from Ortiz. And Hooker got knocked out by Jose Ramirez. And Sergio, you can speak to this because Cutting weight affects your chin. Like, if you are drained going into a fight, it affects your ability to take big shots. Oh, absolutely. Both these fighters outgrew the 140-pound weight division. Only, only uh, Ortiz did it developing naturally, and of course, Hooker did it just with age, getting, getting older. That's a push. Halfway through round number two. No, push it on. I did. Okay. I did. Every shot is with bad intentions with Ortiz Jr. Even the jab comes out like a cannon blasting away. But for keeping Ortiz Jr. at bay, that's what he said he needed to do. Well, volume punching is what Maurice Hooker does. He averaged about 70 punches per round as a junior welterweight, so he's going to throw a lot back at Virgil Ortiz. Like that jab by Ortiz Jr. stabbing the taller hooker to the body. That sets up the lefts and right around the gloves. Just like that. Big winging right hand, it was blocked, but it still affected Hooker. Anytime you're dealing with a tall, lanky, rangy fighter with long arms, you gotta, you gotta get their attention downstairs. Oh, Hooker with a right hand right on the forehead. Hooker could fight on the inside, don't let him fool you. He, he's an excellent body puncher, excellent inside fighter. Good round for Hooker, but Ortiz can certainly change it with one landed punch. Nice right hand by Here's one there and another left hook up against the ropes. And that'll do it for another pretty solid round two. Big by Ortiz Jr. and not standing in front of him. Excellent fight. The fight Hooker had against Jose Ramirez was also very exciting until it wasn't, at least for Hooker, when he was knocked out. This one also off to a great start. That's the jab I need to see more of from Hooker, whether it's to the face, to the chest, or to the belly. Keep it out there. Keep touching something. Uh, 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 
nice angle there by Ortiz Jr. Using his upper body just to get an angle. We talk about the intensity from Ortiz Jr. He said he's never met anyone who hates to lose more than he did. He said he learned his multiplication tables in third grade better than anyone else in his class so that he could say he was the best. Well, he said he wanted to be a badass in math and the guitar and boxing. I asked him what's the hardest. I thought, he, I thought it was math, but he said boxing. Math is harder for you than boxing, we know this. Absolutely. Dig into the body now as Ortiz Jr. Maurice Hooker answers back but got caught in the process. Hooker needs to tuck that chin in. He tucked them elbows in for the body shots, but tuck that chin in. There's Terrence Crawford, 147 pound king watching. Hooker does not want to exchange with the bigger puncher. Come on, Hooker! Ray Sucker coming off a career-long 15-month layoff. He's logged 172 seconds of official action since June, for July of 2019. Oh, left hand, left hook for Maurice Hooker. Beautiful combination by Hooker. Like I said, don't let his size fool you. He can fight on the inside. Just don't get too comfortable. Go back outside and use that stick. Now it's Ortiz showing us his jab. There we go. Stay off the ropes of your hooker as well. Ah. Body shot by Ortiz Jr. Ah. Living Hooker trying to come forward here after a couple of power punches. I'd like to see Hooker go back downstairs some of those body shots. He did it effectively in the first couple of rounds. Seems to have abandoned here in the third. One thing that Virgil Ortiz told us about the jab, he, he started to learn the importance of a power jab in that Brad Solomon fight. Solomon was a tricky and cagey fighter, moved around. It was the jab that took him out. Good round here for Maurice Hooker. Getting an angle after the combination. That's what I want to see more of from Hooker. You can see Ortiz Jr.'s face. He's got a lot of red on it. He's been eating some punches. And Virgil Ortiz exchanging words and a glance with Mighty Mo. Chris Mannix's scorecard through three rounds. I've got three rounds to none in favor of Virgil Ortiz. I think Hooker's done some pretty good work in spurts, but the heavier, cleaner shots are being landed by Virgil Ortiz. Nice jab again from Ortiz Jr. And there's the jab that I was talking about that he, that he learned from. He learned how to use his jab a lot more appropriate when it comes to fighters that know how to fight behind that stick. One thing I'm seeing with this jab is that more of Ortiz's jabs are getting through the guard. And Ortiz, in addition to being an excellent puncher, is a very disciplined defensive fighter. Where he keeps that guard up, and he's gobbled up some of those other jabs. Excellent head movement and subtle defense from Ortiz. right through the guard with the right hand for Virgil Ortiz, who's trying to get closer. Hooker doing his best to keep Ortiz Jr. at bay with the jab. When it comes to such an explosive power puncher like Virgil Ortiz, that hands up earmuff defense is not going to be enough. Them gloves will penetrate through. He steps out, Sergio, and avoids the firefight. He's doing some excellent counter punching right here. Explosive, but not standing in front of him too long. Mo Hooker, this is the fight that Mo Hooker needs to be fighting. I like that feint. I like how he's on the outside. Beautiful counter punching. Again, Hooker, a 10 to 1 underdog here tonight. Hooker heard that Virgil Ortiz Jr. was eyeing perhaps a showdown with Terrence Crawford after this win. Should he get it? Oh, there's a straight right hand for Hooker. That affected Ortiz Jr. a little bit. Two, the best punch of the night for Maurice Hooker. Two chopping right hands by Mo Hooker right there. He was perturbed that Ortiz Jr. was perhaps looking past him. And he said, it's disrespectful and I'm going to teach him a lesson. 30 seconds to go here in round four. What a fight this has been. Oh, 
Oka Best. fighting off the front foot now, getting confident. Best round of the fight for Maurice Hooker. Look at Mighty Mo go. Look who else is in the house. Errol Spence Jr. Maybe he'll get a crack against the winner of this fight. What about them Texas boys, Todd? I'm telling you right there, that's the truth. You got Bud Crawford and the truth in the house. Look at the face of Virgil Ortiz Jr. We've never seen him like this. And that's those long jabs that he's eating up. Round five, what has been an enthralling contest in the 147 pound division. These two welterweights have brought it. Well, now Ortiz knows he's in a dogfight, Sergio. And that's exactly what Maurice Hooker wanted to avoid when we spoke to Terrence Crawford. Said he has too much dog in him. That's why he, he fought for those dogfights. The right only needs to avoid that. And now Hooker getting brave again. Maybe he's felt Ortiz Jr.'s power and is not impressed. If you look at their faces, Ortiz Jr. seems a little more banged up for sure. Round four was the first round that Hooker outlanded Ortiz Jr., who takes to the bottom. Got caught with a right-handed Ortiz. Hooker's not in the short right hand. He's not relying on that long, long punch in the north. In the inside, nice and short. Very similar punch statistics. It is a close fight. I love the way that Maurice Hooker's keeping those elbows tucked in. Chin tucked in, elbows tucked in. That's where the power comes from. And Sergio Ortiz Jr. hasn't even had to deal with being gassed out. He's never had to take rounds off. This is new territory for him. And that's why we were curious to see how Virgil Ortiz Jr. is going to react in the second half of the, of the fight. He takes out everyone in the first six and a half rounds. That body shot affected Hooker. He's got those elbows pinned in. He's buying time as Hooker. The crowd rallying behind Ortiz Jr. tonight. Sorry, coach. And Bomax said, that round's behind us. Let's go forward. It was that solar plex punch. That's what, exactly what it does. Take the wind out of you. How long does it take you to recover from that? You don't recover it right away. That's why he was blocking them shots. But even when you block shots, when your body's hurt, you're still going to feel the impact of them. Like that. This is certainly a fight band's fight, differing styles, multiple changes in momentum. Hooker's elbows are dropping down to defend them ribs. You can expect Ortiz Jr. to come over the top with something big. Yeah, Mari Sucker facing adversity here, but he succeeded in these situations before, was dropped by Alex Sacedo in that title defense in the second round, rallied to stop Sacedo. So he's not going to get rattled easily. Good combination from Hooker. Hooker's best success has been that short right hand. It's not long, not using his reach, it's in the inside. No six inch punch. Nice shot from Hooker again. It snapped Ortiz Jr.'s head back. 
Booker's been having success in mid-range. In the mid-range, he's been landing those shots. Last week, we were fortunate enough to call Chocolatito versus El Gallo here on zone. Another pretty darn good main event tonight, also in Texas. jab as well. This is right about the time that Mo Hooker lost focus with those zero mirrors and got stopped. Needs to learn from them, them mistakes and stay behind the jab. Fight your fight. Another good jab. Oh, Ortiz thinks he's got him. He might have. Back against the ropes. He'll take a knee. Hooker is dead. He will get up! But will he survive? The onslaught is coming, and this young kid doesn't know how to stop. Will the bell save him? 13 seconds left. A big overhand right again from Ortiz Jr. He's trying to close the show in the seventh. Hooker's going to slug it out with him. That is a horrible idea! And he survives the round. Let's see what Hooker has left in the tank. He goes right after Ortiz Jr. Give the guy credit. He has courage. Chris Mannix, your scorecard through six. Well, it's all Virgil Ortiz at this point. 59-54 after that last 10-8 round. His thoughts, Todd, are just thudding. He is oh, and another right hand as Hooker takes a knee again. And this time, he may not get up. He thinks he's broken his hand. It looks like his elbow is dislocated. How no, powerful are Virgil yeah. Ortiz Jr.'s body punches to he dislocate an elbow like that? To see how he passed this test against a former champion, a formidable puncher in Hooker Jr. Excuse me, with Hooker, but it was that body shot. What a body shot right there. In the elbow, you can see, I don't know if it's his wrist or his elbow. Looked like a, a right hand landed wrong and it snapped his own elbow, but it was those body shots as well that he kept blocking. He was absorbing a lot of shots to the forearms and the elbows and they took their toll. Let's give both of our fighters a big round of applause. The end comes to you, round number seven, 36 seconds, and waved off by referee Lawrence Cole for your winner by TKO, and the new WBA International Welterweight Champion the fighting board of Grand Prairie, Texas, the phenomenal Virgil Ortiz Jr. He's nicknamed Phenomenal, and tonight he was phenomenal. I mean, that's exactly what you want to see versus a former champion in Hooker. And I look, not take nothing away from Maurice Hooker. I could see. Everything that he looked from, that he learned from Bo Mac McIntyre, he implemented. It was an exciting fight, but he's just in there with a, a much younger, just straight killer in Virgil Ortiz Jr. Who's ready for the big names and the big dogs at 147? It just so happens that three pieces of the welterweight title are actually in the building tonight with really? Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford, that's right, both that's right. ringside. What do you have to say to them? I don't have anything else to say. I do all my talking in the ring. Technically, I am in the ring right now, but you know what I mean, all right? <laughs> For a guy like Terrence Crawford, who does not have a fight book next, would you like that to be your next fight? I would love that opportunity. You know what? Um, if, if I get any opportunity from anyone, then of course, and Crawford is 
possibly the number one pound for pound boxer in the world, you know, definitely top two. And uh, I, if they give me that opportunity, I'm looking at you, bud. I'm looking at you. If you want to make this five, and I'm more than willing to do it. Do you believe at 22 years old, you're ready for a Terrence Crawford? I don't care if I'm ready or not. I want that fight. Congratulations, Virgil. I have one more thing to say. To Miraza, estoy aprendiendo español. Ya sé que es más importante para mí. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, that's, I'm learning. I'm learning Spanish. All right, thank you.